Hi, it's Rachel here from Offroad CC and today I'm going to be look, looking at the Marin Hawk Hill 3, a bike I reviewed recently over on our website, Offroad CC. The Marin Hawk Hill 3 is the top of the range bike in a three model lineup. So this top spot comes with a price of £2,100. The bike has an SLX build, Tektra Orion four piston brakes and a RockShox Revelation fork. Other bikes in the range are the Hawk Hill 2 with a RockShox Recon RL fork and a SRAM NX drivetrain. Um, that one comes with Shimano MT201 brakes. And then there's the Hawk Hill 1 with the same fork as the Hawk Hill 2 um, and same brakes but with Dior drivetrain. Those bikes cost 1700 quid and 1350 respectively. And of course, they have similar funky paint fades as this bike. The kit on this Hawk Hill is reliable and it's great to see the Revelation fork at this price. I've also used these Tecto brakes before on a Norco Range A3 and found them to be reliable too. They're not the most powerful, but they're okay. Um, the reach adjust is altered by an Allen key, which is a bit of a niggle, and there's no eye spec compatibility, meaning the bars end up a little bit cluttered with the brake. Um, and also the sh um, the brake lever on this side interferes with a transex shifter style dropper lever, um, but apart from that, there's no other issues. The Hawk Hill runs on Marin own rims, which have a respectable 29mm internal width, um, and that'll be good for setting something wider than the 2.4 W2B Trail Boss tyres that come with this bike. The Trail Bosses are really a summer only tyre, or at the very least, a rear only tyre, and not really up to dealing with the soggy UK winter conditions. I swept it out for a um, shorty, for a Maxxis shorty, and went from there. The cockpit is also a Marin affair with 780mm wide bars, and I was happy to see a stumpy 35mm stem. Lastly, the bikes will also be sold with Xfusion Manic dropper posts, not the Transex ones that you see here. There's a 125mm drop for the size small and a 150mm drop for the size medium and above. This is especially pertinent as the Manic dropper post is a total of 437mm long, which will allow for more insertion into the seat tube before the post is stopped by the pivot. So this Transex dropper is a 150mm post, but it actually measures 480mm from top to bottom and is far too long for a rider of this size medium bike. Whilst the Hawk Hill is happy to turn out the miles, if that's your thing, it's probably the 29er Marin Rift Zone that I've reviewed previously that you'd want. The geometry and the build of this Hawk Hill is more suited to getting rowdy on the trails and the single track rather than going for miles and miles in a straight line. Pointers in the more gravity fed direction are those four pop brakes and the nice short 35mm stem and also one by drive chains across the, across the range which are great additions to a more aggressive bike build. Geometry wise the 2019 bike has had a big overhaul compared to the 2018 bike. It gets a degree slacker at the head angle 66.5 degrees, longer in the reach 445mm compared to 437 for the medium sized bike last year and it's longer in the wheelbase by 20mm. It also gets a slightly steeper effective seat angle at 74.5 degrees. With, as I mentioned, a more appropriate tyre choice selected on the front, the Hawk Hill was impressive from the very start. With three volume reducer tokens inserted into the 130mm fork, it stands up well to abuse and despite its short travel, the Hawk Hill coped very well with some seriously rough terrain. Marin's multi-track suspension was supportive, it's progressive and it's sensitive too. I battered the bike through rock gardens and did some serious braking down steeper terrain and the rear end stuck to the ground pretty well indeed. The Hawk Hill is a well-balanced engaging ride that will have you tempted to push the limits of what you think a 120mm full slasher should be capable of. I rode the Hawk Hill on all my normal test trails and certainly forgot I was on a short travel bike in inverted commas. It took everything in its stride from steep and muddy to tight corners to smooth berms. Climbing hills on the Hawk Hill is averagely good. It's no slouch, but the position the rider adopts could be more efficient if that seat tube angle was a little steeper. It's not going to be a deal breaker, and the Hawk Hill winches up adeptly. I would also like to see slightly longer chain stays on the Hawk Hill to aid that climbing ability. A slightly longer reach and a slightly longer wheelbase would help the bike become a bit more manly on the fast descents. As it is, when descending at higher speeds was the only time I lost confidence in the Hawk Hill as it came a tad twitchy, making my, reaches my fingers reach for the brake prior to top speeds. <laughs> the last word though is this. 
The Marin Hawk Hill 3 is well sorted and a good value build that completely blurs the lines between XC, trail and even enduro bikes. It can hold its own with longer travel bikes, it's well specced and it comes in at a very reasonable price too. It's hard to fault this versatile bike. Whilst it's not groundbreaking in terms of design or geometry, it does its job of being a fun, lively and capable trail bike very well indeed. For a full review, go over to Off-Road CC now and thanks for watching.